Hello, free spirit beaters. How are you guys doing today? This is Kristen here with a new episode of Free Spirit Beating right here on the Softlex Company YouTube channel. Today we're going to be using the magical crimping pliers and Softlex beading wire to create connectors and do a, a holiday jewelry design. So I'm excited about that. I'm really starting to feel the holidays now. Um, listening to Christmas music this morning, my tree is up, the lights are on outside. Um, definitely in full swing over here at the Fagan household. And hope you guys are um, getting excited too for those of you that celebrate Christmas. And I, uh, let's see what I've got to talk about today. Okay, first thing is we have a brand new um, trio called the Holly Jolly Trio. And it is um, three 10 foot spools of our soft flex beading wire, red coral, green, emerald, and white quartz. Super, super fun and festive. So that is new on our website as of last week. We also have a um, deal going on that ends today. It's the buy two trios. So buy two packs of those um, three set trios and you'll get a free tool. This You'll get a free magical crimping plier. And this is the tool I'm gonna be using for our design today. This is an awesome tool. It's one of our favorites. It um, it takes a crimp tube, a two by two millimeter crimp tube, and it turns it into a gorgeous little two millimeter bead. And uh, you don't need a crimp cover. It gives it a really nice finish, super secure when you're using Softflex beading wire and Softflex company crimp tubes. Um, and so very cool tool if you don't have one, um, you are just gonna absolutely love it. And let's see, what else? Um, we also have, oh, we also have a Holly Jolly bead mix that went up for sale last week too. So it's also in those red, green, and like white crystal colors, really pretty. You can find um, that as well as the trios right on our homepage at www.softlexcompany.com. Uh, the buy two trios get the free crimper is for retail purchases only, so make sure that you are um, either signed in as a guest if you are a designer, or just sign in as your retail customer and you'll be able to get that deal. You just add two trios to your shopping cart and you'll automatically get um, the crimping plier added to your cart. You'll see it right there for zero dollars, so super easy. Um, and oh and we also have a winter wonderland kit so that's another thing that went live last week so we had three new products last week the holly jolly trios the holly jolly bead mix and a um, winter wonderland design kit we do those in very limited quantities when i looked before the video we had just six left and they're a lot of fun they're just um a surprise mystery mix and sarah ayler on Facebook does a Facebook live at the end of each month to design with the kit of the month so the winter wonderland kit just went on sale and I believe Sarah will be doing a design video at the end of December sometime um, with the holiday it could possibly be the first week of January I'm not sure but go check that out too you can see that on our homepage and if you're here say hello uh, let me know how it's going over in your neck of the woods. I'm gonna take the camera and flip it down to my beading table and we can get started with our design today. We have Softlex Company, um, should be on the chat with us today. Oh, you know what? I just noticed. That's why nobody said anything. I have the chat disabled for some reason. Um, let me see if I can fix that up. Hold on just a second.
that might have just been something that happened accidentally. Do, do, do. Sorry, just a minute. I've never had that. Oh no, it says live chat should be on. Enable live chat. Maybe I'll turn it off and turn it on again and see if that helps. Oh, it is turned on. <laughs> Thank you, Damien. I was like, huh, it's showing on. So Softlex company, Damien is here on the chat with us and he has now turned chat on so you guys can Go ahead and talk in the chat, ask questions. Um, Damien will go ahead and post links to things that I'm talking about and products that I'm talking about so you can easily find them on our website. Thank you so much for turning that on. I must have accidentally hit that um, turn off button or something when I scheduled the live. All right, so let's talk about what I've got here on my beading table. I've got a pair of chain nose pliers and I also have flat nose pliers but you can use two chain nose if you happen to have two chain nose and not a flat nose that is quite all right for what we're doing I have a pair of round no round nose pliers here I have a pair of flush cutters I'm using the Softlex professional flush cutters these are an awesome tool I think we're actually sold out of the long handle on our website right now, but you can still get this tool in the short handle. So um, it's available, but just in the shorter handle. And then I've got our magical crimping plier tool. I'm gonna be using the red coral color from the Holly Jolly Trios. I'm using the Softlex beading wire in medium. And I've got here some six millimeter green glass pearl beads. I've made a bunch of little connectors already. So that was made with um, Softlex craft wire in the 22 gauge. And I'm all out of the non-tarnished silver, but this is the color I used non-tarnished silver plated and I'm also using the sterling silver 2 by 2 millimeter Softlex crimp tubes I think I'm gonna end up using approximately 14 of these little six millimeter green glass pearls and approximately 14 of the two by two crimp tubes. We'll see when I get to my desired length of necklace what we end up with. I used about 12 inches of the Softlex beading wire and 25 inches of 22 gauge craft wire just to have a little of a um, idea of how much of each product I'm using. I'm just going to take some crimp tubes out. And so first thing I'm going to show you guys is how I made these traditional little connectors here. So I used 22 gauge non-tarnished silver, silver plated. For your example, I'm actually going to use my pewter color because I ran out of the non-tarnished silver. And I'm just going to cut about an inch and a half of wire. And this is craft wire, so this is a copper-based hard wire that has been um, colored and then coated in an enamel process that makes it hypoallergenic and uh, non-tarnishing.
Bridget says, hello everybody. Hi Bridget, welcome. Pamela says, hi. Hello Pamela, good to see you. So I'm gonna use my round nose pliers first and I'm just gonna place this wire flush with the middle of my pliers there so this part is flush and I'm just gonna take my wrist and twist the wire around my round nose plier and I'll make like a little P. Now I'm gonna put my round nose plier back in grab this little end where the um, where this end meets the straight edge and I'm just gonna twist it back just a little bit and that just makes me have sort of a straight line with a loop there. Basically I just made an eye pin and then I'm gonna string on my six millimeter bead just like that. I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers. I'm gonna grab a hold of the wire just above the bead. And I'm gonna turn it down 90 degree angle just like that. Then I'm gonna pick up my round nose pliers again and I'm gonna try and position it similar to where I was before on the um, plier head. See, there's a tapered plier here. So I wanna get my loop fairly close to the same size. So I'm gonna place it similar to where I had it before. I'm just gonna use my finger and I'm gonna twist the wire around the round nose plier. Then I'm gonna take the plier out and I'm gonna put the plier in on the other section. So it was here on the top. I'm going to take it out and put it onto the bottom. And then I'm going to use my finger to complete that loop. So you see there when you pull it out, I was able to complete that loop. Chrissy says, I have a, such a hard time making loops. You know, it's one of those things that um, you just have to keep practicing. I, it took me a long time. I do find if you work with a lower, like this is the 22 gauge, where you can use your fingers a little bit more to help guide the wire, they're a little bit easier. As you get heavier gauges, those loops become harder and harder to make because it's harder to kind of manipulate them with your hands. So try with a lower, um, try starting out with a lower gauge, like 22, 24, um, and practice with those and then move up to the to the thicker oh you never changed the lower part of the pliers yeah give that a try I think I do that because I like to use my finger to wrap it around and so when doing so you have to kind of switch the plier to another spot so now I'm going to take my flush cutters and I'm going to trim right up against that wire so that I take off the excess. And then you can come back in with your round nose pliers and just tighten up, make sure they're, they're connected. So here's another issue that happens when you're making wire connectors. If you look here, I've got this loop going in this direction, but this loop is going up and down in this direction. So this is why you need two chain nose pliers or a chain nose and a flat nose plier to fix this. So I'm going to grab one loop with my chain nose. I'm going to grab the other loop with my flat nose and I'm going to twist my wrist so that I can get them going in the same direction just like this. So now when I take that off both of my loops are going the same way. They're going parallel to each other. And that's how you make a little connector. So that's sort of a traditional craft wire connector. And now we're gonna make some of these fun little connector links with soft flex beading wire in between. 
And really, you could even just do all of these loops um, with the soft flex, but I had had a bunch of these already done, so I decided to use them in the middle for this particular design. Let me see if I can straighten out. I don't know if anyone else has a lot of flies this time of year, but in Arizona, for some reason, I think they're all trying to get out of the cold and into our homes. And I feel like every single day I have one fly in my office that is just driving me nuts. And I have one right now <laughs> that just keeps flying right around my face and my ear. I don't know. I had a spray bottle in here the other day and I kept spraying myself to try and keep them away. Ah. So funny. So if you see a fly come into the frame, that is why it is just here uh, giving me a hard time. Okay, so I'm going to cut about two inches, we'll say, to make my connector. And I'm just going to string my Softflex wire through one of these craft wire loops. Then I'm going to string on a crimp tube just like that. I'm going to go up, back up through the crimp tube. So at this point I just have the one sort of teardrop shape going back up through the crimp. And I'm just going to look back at my other loops to get a similar size. I'm going to take this longer strand and I'm going to feed it back through my crimp tube again. And you can get three Softflex wire strands through a two by two millimeter crimp tube. Sometimes you have to wiggle a little more than others, but three wires fits. And then I'm just gonna adjust them. So I feel like they're about the same there. So basically we made kind of a bow tie. Now I'm gonna use my handy dandy magical crimping tool. This tool works with our medium soft flex beading wire and our two by two crimped tubes and only that size of crimp tube. So what you'll see here is this tool has one notch that's located on each side of the, of the inside of the tool. I want my crimp tube to fit right in the center of that notch. Once I get my crimp tube in the center, I can give it a nice squeeze. And what that will do is pinch all the corners of my crimp. So it's going to look like a puffy square with pinched corners. Then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and I'm going to put it back in the center into that same notch. And that is really your key. You just want to get it into the center of that notch give it another squeeze and then you keep your tube in there and you kind of pump and turn a few more times. Pump and turn, pump and turn. And that gives you this beautiful little bead. And then you can go ahead and trim off those little wire tails with your flush cutter you can get as close to that crimp tube as you can. Just trim that off there. And there is your connector. Now I'm gonna pick up one of these that I had made and I'm gonna use my chain nose pliers. Just gonna grab one side and I'm going to twist my wrist so that I slightly pop that, op that loop open so I can slide that on. And 
and then I'm going to grab a hold of the end again and I'm going to turn my wrist back down to close it. So now I have that one connected and I'm just going to repeat that a few more times. So I'm going to cut myself a few strands of soft flex. And then I'll pick up my strand, slide it into this loop here, slide a crimp tube on, go back up through the tube, like so. Take the longer end, feed that one back down through the tube. So you make like a little bow tie. Just like that. Place your crimp tube in the center of your magical crimping tool. Give it a squeeze. Take it out, turn it. Put it back in that center. Give it another squeeze, and now just spin and squeeze. And you'll feel the, the crimp tube is sort of in there, and it's just sort of, it's just being a little more rounded each time you just pump and squeeze all the way around. If you have any difficulty with your crimping tool, most likely you're not getting your crimp tube in the center of the notch. So just pay a little more attention and sort of Feel it out, wiggle your crimp around a little bit until you, you should feel it kind of sink in there. And then I'll pick up another connector. Just grab the end, slightly twist to open the loop. Put that on and then twist it back. Now you'll want to make sure that these little loops here are nice and tight, especially when you're done with your design. You might just want to take a look, go back and check all your loops. Since Softlex wire is a very thin material, uh, you don't want it to slide out of your little loopy there. So just go through and make sure you've got your loops nice and tight. And then you just add your next piece of wire for your next connector. There's that fly. <laughs> Isn't it a neat a neat technique, Pamela? There's so many things you can do with it too. I mean, if you don't want to do any craft wire connectors, you could actually just do away with that at all. Um, the other thing I was thinking, I'm going to just keep this like this, but you could even add little like charms and dangles easily pump coming from here uh, in the front or if you made it as a bracelet and you wanted to add some charms on it that could be really cute too funny story about these beads they're actually from my wedding 17 years ago I made all of the bridesmaids necklaces with this because their dresses were like a night a really deep um, green like this color green so I made all the bridesmaids a necklace with these beads and at the end of the night I came home with one broken I still to this day don't know whose it was <laughs> But somebody's necklace broke while they were dancing. It was probably my sister because she was just having a ball. And um, she actually fell into my wedding cake. 
and Jack, so she was really having a good time at our wedding. It was probably hers, uh, but I came home with it, and I had spent so much time on all of these things that I couldn't just get rid of it, and I've been holding on to this little stash of beads all this time. But you never know, right? You never know when you're gonna use them. You never know when you have a design idea that's perfect for those items. No, she fell before we cut the cake. <laughs> Pamela, she fell before. Luckily, she didn't fall entirely into it. She just sort of elbowed it. So we were able to uh, take the cake and move it in a position where um, the one side that was facing everybody was still intact. <laughs> good times, good times. We have it on video though, which is really funny. You see the whole, she went and sat down in our, you know how they have those big wicker chairs for the bride and groom that you sit at before the cake. So she went and sat down in one of our chairs and the whole chair went over. <laughs> she went and her elbow went into the cake and she went down on the floor and we caught it. We caught it on video, <laughs> which makes it all the best. It is a fun story to tell. I haven't thought about it actually in a while. So here's a tip if you're struggling with getting that third wire in, sometimes if your wires are sort of crisscrossing, like mine are right here, one's going this way, one's going that way, they're going to take up a little extra space in that crimp tube. So if you take your wire and you try and flatten them out so that they're going parallel, you're going to open up a little extra space for you to get that third strand through just like that and then once you have it through you just pull on these little tails here to adjust your size so like this one's really large and I want to make it smaller I'm just gonna pull on that tail so that I can get it to be the same size Chrissy says, uh, well, let's see, Pamela says, a perfect wedding story to remember forever, for sure. And Chrissy says, you should upload it to YouTube. I can totally upload it to YouTube, right? That would be funny. I'd probably make it private so that I can just share the link with people. Because <laughs> she would be pretty, uh, although actually she probably wouldn't be too embarrassed. It is what it is. Sometimes we all get a little silly, right? <laughs> It's fun to have stories like that. That's one thing, you know, it's when you're planning a wedding, it's like super intense and you just want everything to be so, so perfect. Um, but when it comes down to it, when you're actually there that day, there's so much you can't control. You just have to kind of go with the flow, laugh it off. I mean, at the time I was like, what happened? But luckily nobody really knew except for the people that saw it happen. <laughs> and it didn't, you know, instead of being uh, something to get upset over, it's something to laugh about later, for sure. Let me see what I'm up to on my length here. I was thinking about making it like I don't know, 17 inches or something. We're at just about 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll probably use less beads than I even thought.
and you can make this any length I'm thinking about making it like um not quite a choker but just sort of a short necklace I'll put a clasp on the end but you can easily make this longer and just not even have a clasp just make it something that goes over your head or you can make it a bracelet like I was saying before and add little charms on the connections there to dangle down I think I have a couple of little wreath charms somewhere maybe I'll after the video see what that looks like because I don't know where they are right now turn it compress again and then just let the manufacturer suggests going around um, five or six times after you crimp it to just pump spin and pump to really get that crimp in there nice and rounded right it's pretty important to use good quality crimps when you're using soft flex beading wire and this crimp tool and anytime you do a design really because your crimps are what holds everything together and if you haven't tried soft flex company crimps I highly suggest you give them a try they're double the wall thickness of most on the market. They're seamless, so there's no seam there to break open. And they're just really a superior product to most crimps out there. If you've ever struggled with crimps or feel like you can't crimp because they fall apart on you or they break, um, a lot of times it could be your crimps, not, not you. So your tools and your materials matter so I would give Softflex company crimp tubes a try if you've struggled with crimps in the past. Pamela asks, do the cutters you're using cut both craft wire and Softflex wire? They do. I use these for um, all of my cutting needs. We suggest them more for Softflex wire and that's only because um, if you're using craft wire, it's they're just going to be a little harder. I would not use memory wire, and if I'm using craft wire, I try not to use it anything above like 20 gauge. If I want to use 18, 16, or even 14 gauge, I have another pair of cutters um, that I use for those higher, higher gauge wires, just so I don't, um, so I don't wear these down. But what's really nice about these is you can take these to be uh, sharpened. They are a tool that you can bring to a knife sharpener and they can sharpen these for you. So they're a nice investment. You're welcome, Pamela. I'm gonna go and just fix that there. All right, I'm gonna see where I'm at now on my length. Thirteen and a half. Just a couple more lengths. Let me cut some more wire. This is such a pretty red, this wire. It's called red coral and it's like a true red, but it has a little bit of a deep tone to it that I feel like makes it really rich.
couple more links and we should be able to finish off with the clasp. Thomas and Damien are also working on a blog post for today that talks about this technique too. So I think we've got like, I don't know, at least three or four other projects that use this technique that's going to go up on the blog later this afternoon. So you can see a lot of other fun ways to use this technique on different projects. So those of you that are watching right now, do you guys only um, come to YouTube to watch our videos or do you go to Facebook as well? Are you on both places? Because we do a lot of live videos on the SoftFlex Company Facebook page too. It's been a lot of fun for me to start this YouTube live series though. I think I started in August. Cause I know there's a lot of people that aren't on Facebook. So it's been a great way to connect with those of you that aren't over there. Pamela watches on both. Jody watches on both. Chrissy watches on both. Wonderful. Sarah has a design challenge coming up this this week on Wednesday. She is live at 1 p.m. Pacific time on the Softlex Company Facebook page. She is, um, I believe she's doing a design challenge featuring a mystery box from Fusion Beads on Wednesday, our friends over at Fusion. So that should be fun. That could be just about anything because they carry all sorts of stuff over there at fusionbeads.com. You can find our beading wire on their website as well. They probably sell these little six millimeter pearls too. Chrissy says, I like YouTube better because I can watch it on my TV. That's what we do too. It's so funny. Me and my whole family, we have a few shows, a few YouTube shows that we enjoy watching together. And uh, in the evenings after dinner, like we're not watching television. We're watching YouTube uh, on our TV and we're catching up with some of our, our favorites. It's so interesting. I love it on my television. Plus you get it on a really big screen. I wonder how the quality um, looks on that really big screen. I think in addition to Sarah's live video this week, I think she's got one on Wednesday. Next week, we're having another live bead sale, this time from Mike Sherman's personal collection. And that will be on, I think it's the 12th. Yeah, that's on the 12th. It's a Facebook Live at 1 p.m. Pacific time. A bead sale from Mike Sherman's personal collection, which is always a really fun a really fun sale. Mike has a great eye and so many wonderful beads in his collection. I always look forward to it myself. Pamela says, it's very nice and clear on the large screen. I watch both on TV. Wonderful. Good to hear. <laughs> I got a new phone this year, so I was hoping the quality was better. 
I should probably watch some, but you know, watching yourself isn't really isn't really a fun thing to do sometimes. <laughs> Chrissy says, I just made a necklace for someone using the Druzy beads I bought from one of Mike's collection bead sales. Awesome. Share a picture with us in the VIB group, Chrissy, if you haven't yet. We have a very important beader inspiration group on Facebook as well. And anyone can join. It's a closed group, so once you're in there, um, nobody that's not a member won't will see what you're up to, but anyone can join, and it's really fun to see what everyone else is up to in there. We host our um, monthly contests. If you buy one of our monthly kits, like the Winter Wonderland kit that's currently on sale, and then you share your designs in that Facebook group. We then pick a winner and it's not based on what you make. It's just random. So we just want you to make stuff and share it. It's We're not judging anything. We're just randomly going through and um, from the people that created something, picking a winner for the next kit. Chrissy says, okay, I will. She is in the group. Wonderful. I love Druzies. They're so pretty. Oh, I really, uh, I actually botched this crimp here. Let's see if I can salvage it. Eh. See, this is what happens if you don't pay attention and you don't get your crimp tube right in the center. See how that is like totally <laughs> totally botched we will cut that one off and do another in the meantime I'm actually gonna measure this and see how close I am oh yeah I'm way um, actually I'm actually over where I wanted to be so I think what I will do is I think I'm gonna cut this one loose I did one too many and instead I will get out a clasp I'm just going to use a little lobster clasp on this design. I'm going to string my soft flex, add a crimp tube, go back through just like I've been doing, but this time I'm going to add the clasp on this side and then go back through my crimp again. Adjust my things. And just to show you on the other end, I have one of the red connectors on this end. So I'm just gonna attach my clasp right to that loop there on the other end. Super easy. Okay, let me pay attention this time. Get my crimp tube right in the center. Give it a good squeeze. Turn it. Squeeze it again. Go around.
trim off that wire and now I can just use this loop here to connect it. And there you go. A really sweet holiday colors, the red and green necklace using that technique. I'm going to go ahead and put it on. And let me tell you, actually, before I put it on, let me measure it exactly and tell you what length I ended up getting out of it. So. All right, so I'm at 18 inches for this necklace. I ended up using I ended up using 11 six millimeter pearl beads and and 12 of the two by two millimeter crimp tubes in sterling silver and one lobster clasp on the end. Well, they kind of remind me of little um, ornaments. <laughs> the little balls. I'm going to go ahead and switch you guys back up. You can see it on. And I got to come out of the sun. That sun likes to creep in as I'm doing my video. There we go. So there you have it. Cute little holiday design with the soft flex connectors. I made these little earrings. Well, they're kind of big actually. They're two, about two inches long. I made these on a video two weeks ago and they also use the red coral beading wire. Let me go this way where I'm out of the sun. There we go. Red coral beading wire with some green beads for the holidays. So if you go back on the free spirit beading playlist, you can look at that video was on, what day did I do that one? I think it was November 12th. And you can see how to make those earrings with soft flex as well. And this is like super duper light. You can easily add some charms or a little focal something hanging here pretty fun so i'm going to show you guys one last thing before i jump off um i'm going to give you a little a little tour here of the home page so let me go ahead and pick this up spin this around so if you go to the softlex home page You'll see here, this is our sale that's ending today. Buy two trios, get a free magical crimper. Um, you can click right on that and it'll bring you to our trios. And in here, I've got it all listed with their names. So we were looking at the Holly Jolly one and then it'll change this picture so you'll know which one you're, which one you're doing. And then you could just add that to your cart. And when you add two trios, you'll get the free um, crimping plier. But in addition, I wanted to show you guys uh, there. Oh, we're out of stock of the Winter Wonderland. That must have sold out. We just had six left before. But here's the Holly Jolly under the tree bead mix under new products. And if you scroll down, if anyone is interested in a gift certificate or telling anybody about a gift certificate for you, we have them here. It's like teeny tiny down here. Uh, you can click on gift certificates and purchase one for yourself or have someone else get one for you. But I just wanted, it's kind of a new feature, so I just wanted to point that out to everybody that that's now available. We're pretty excited um, to be able to offer gift certificates on the website. So I wanted to uh, make sure I showed you, especially since it's so itty bitty all the way at the bottom on the left hand side. So hope you guys are having a great week. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I will be here again next Monday, same time, 11 a.m. Pacific time here on YouTube. 
And in the meantime, I will see you guys in the comments and stuff over on Facebook in our Facebook videos. We've got Sarah this Wednesday doing the design challenge with Fusion Beads. And um, if you like our page, subscribe, uh, give us some thumbs up on the videos. That's always really helpful for all of these, you know, social media algorithms to see that people are enjoying the content. And it's good for us to know you guys are enjoying it too. Leave me comments. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And if there's something you've been wanting to learn uh, and we haven't touched on it yet, you can leave that in a comment too and I'll take a look and see if it's something I can bring to one of these videos in the future. All right, have a good week. Thanks again. Talk to you guys later.